Information discussed in this podcast may be sensitive in nature to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Emily Bailey grew up in a busy home in Ontario, Canada. Emily had four siblings and a ton of friends. Like many teenagers, Emily found a rebellious streak, but always remained close to her mother and her sister and brothers. At age 19, Emily gave birth to her first daughter. A year later, she would have another little girl. Life as a young mom wasn't easy and Emily struggled. But there was one thing that was never a question for Emily. She loved her girls more than anything. At the end of 2021, Emily started dating someone new. Not much is known about this man, but around the same time, Emily started to retreat a little bit from friends and family. Emily was also a regular social media poster, and she would stop posting altogether around mid-December. Emily was living a slightly transient lifestyle around this time, so when she missed her first scheduled visit with her youngest daughter, her daughter's father was worried, but not panicked. But when Emily missed her second visit, he knew something was wrong. He started checking in with friends to see if anyone had heard from her, but no one had. It was now January 10th, 2022, and it was soon realized that no one had seen or heard from Emily since January 2nd, 2022. Emily was officially reported as a missing person. Where is Emily Bailey? Family and friends of a missing Hamilton woman spent the day posting flyers across the city in hopes that someone will find her. As Sylvie Lenve reports, her family says it's out of character for her not to talk to them or post on social media, something she hasn't done in weeks. I am a mess. I need my daughter back. And wherever she is, just please come home. And we love you, miss you. <laughs> Friends and family of 23-year-old Emily Bailey gathered today to post flyers across the city. They say she was last seen in the area of Barton and Kenilworth on January 2nd. This is very out of character. I know she would get in contact to see her daughters. These babies mean everything to her. She's never done anything like this before. Um, she's an amazing mother. Brandon Hunter and Emily share a child together, 22-month-old Kinsley. Emily has another daughter, Harper, who is three. The girls are currently living with their grandparents. She runs around on her, on her toy phone. That's to say she's talking to mommy. Her sister, Harper, looked at me the other day and said, please just bring my mommy home. And it's so, so difficult. It's the hardest thing I've had to deal with. Harper has been crying a lot for mommy asking for, she knows something's going on. Those heartbroken tears seen today. Emily's family says they noticed something was wrong when she stopped posting online. She'll post on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and she'll post her on social media and she has not been um, on social media for quite some time now. The last TikTok she posted was from December 12th. Her last TikTok, I had a feeling something was something was up. And normally it's Emily posts is happy TikToks. Normally, she, you know, on, on Facebook she'll she'll be posting all the time. And recently she hasn't been. Emily is slim, 5'4", and weighs 100 pounds. She has black hair with blue and green highlights. She has an Hello, and welcome back to the Where Are They podcast. Today's missing person case is going to take us to Ontario, Canada, the Canadian port city of Hamilton, Ontario. If you are new here, welcome to the show. If you are a repeat listener, thank you so much for your continued support of our mission. Of course, the bigger reach these cases have, the better. So continue sharing these cases. 
Now let's get right into the story of 23-year-old Emily Bailey. Emily Bailey grew up in a household with a single mother and four siblings. Emily was also a chatty child. She was very outgoing, friendly, and had a great sense of humor. In her teenage years, Emily found herself hanging with a different group of people, perhaps a group of friends that would help lead her down the wrong path. Emily's mom, Lori, said that Emily did struggle with some depression, and that may have also played a role in Emily making some bad choices. Emily became involved in drugs, and when she was 18, she found herself pregnant. Once the initial shock wore off, Emily was excited, and this helped propel her to make better choices and clean up her act for her child, which she did, at least for a while. When her daughter was born, Emily was so happy. All over her social media are photos and videos of her with her daughter, playing, kissing her, cuddling her, just all in all, loving her. Emily and her baby's father did not stay together, but they maintained a decent relationship. Shockingly, a year later, Emily became pregnant again and gave birth to another baby girl. She would also not stay with this baby's father either, but again, they were able to maintain a good relationship together. Shortly after her second daughter was born, Emily began having difficulties again with drugs. Emily's mother would ultimately take custody of Emily's older daughter, while her younger daughter would go into the care of the baby's grandmother on the father's side. For a while, Emily led a transient lifestyle. Her mother even at one point learned that Emily had become homeless and was living in a tent. Her mother was heartbroken, but knew that her focus had to be on her baby granddaughter at that time. The family did still maintain constant contact with Emily, and she was especially close with one of her brothers. Everyone loved Emily and was trying to help her get back on track. In the fall of 2021, Emily began dating someone new. Her family didn't know him, nor did they know most of the people that Emily hung out with. In early December, Emily stopped by to visit her mom. Unbeknownst to her at the time, This would be the last visit Lori would have with her daughter. December 12th, Emily made her last TikTok video. She completely went under the radar after this point, something very unusual for Emily, who was a regular social media poster. The Disappearance On New Year's Eve, Emily was with some friends. On New Year's Day, she was looking for a ride to go visit another friend's house. A few days later, she didn't show up for her scheduled visit with her youngest daughter. They had a visit schedule set up and Emily always adhered to it. If she couldn't, for whatever reason, Emily always called. On the day of this scheduled visit, Emily didn't call, nor did she show up as planned. Her ex was definitely concerned, but not panicked. Emily's life was a little bit all over the place. And even though this was very uncharacteristic of her, he figured there had to be a good explanation. But on January 10th, Emily missed a second scheduled visit. By now, her ex still hadn't heard from her and he just knew something was wrong. Something didn't feel right. He started checking in with some friends, and they said they hadn't heard from her or seen her either. At this point, he didn't really know what to do. He alerted child services, who was overseeing their child officially, to see what he should do. It was then that he reported Emily as missing. Child services would be the one to call and check in with Emily's mom. At this point, her mom hadn't heard from her in a few weeks, and was also starting to feel like something was very, very wrong. It's difficult to search for any missing person sometimes, but especially someone who is living a somewhat transient lifestyle. Where do you even start? Especially when you don't know all of her friends or who she has been hanging out with or where she had even been staying. Emily Bailey was officially missing and no one quite knew what to do.
the search. Most of what was known in the weeks leading up to Emily's disappearance was a result of the investigation process. And it's important to note, this is still very much an active investigation and authorities have said they cannot release everything that they have at this point. A statement that has been reiterated by the family. What the investigation did uncover is that Emily possibly had more going on in her life than most people knew about. A friend did speak of an ex-boyfriend that was said to be very angry and sometimes abusive with Emily. But according to this friend, Emily cut ties with this man in October and she didn't speak to him again, at least as far as this friend knew. Another friend would come forward and say that in November, Emily had texted her and told her that she was once again pregnant. She included a photo with the picture of a positive home pregnancy test. She said she was terrified about it and not sure what to do. This friend said that her and Emily had talked a lot less since she began dating her new guy that fall. Police were able to learn that Emily was last seen on January 1st at a home on Weir Street North, in the city's east end, near Barton Street East. Some people said that Emily had been living with a boyfriend, a guy named Jeff. Now, Emily was seen leaving this house on Weir Street on the morning of January 1st, saying that she was going to be heading to another friend's house. But she allegedly never made it to this other friend's house. Interestingly, no one has ever announced whose house she was at on Weir Street. But also what's interesting is someone that knew both Emily and Jeff has said that Jeff, who might possibly be the new boyfriend, actually lived on Weir Street too. So were they at Jeff's house or someone else's? Some interesting things about Jeff. Around January 5th, days after Emily was last seen, but before she was reported as missing, Jeff showed up at a mutual friend's house complaining of pain in his hand. He stated that somehow he had heard it on a chainsaw and he was in agony. This friend took a look at his hand and his arm and realized that it was infected and told him he needed to get to a hospital immediately. After Emily disappeared, this friend went to detectives with this information because they thought that it might be suspicious. The only other clue released in this investigation involved a dark colored pickup truck. Detectives learned that she was seen in the weeks prior to her disappearance with a dark colored pickup truck. But this clue remains pretty vague in my opinion. Was she riding in the truck? Was she talking to someone in it? And this was said to have happened weeks or at least a week before her disappearance. So how can they connect this to her case in any way? Again, we also know that they haven't released everything that they know due to the ongoing investigation. They have to keep some things close to the vest. But who else was in Emily's life at that time? In March of 2022, authorities announced in a press conference that Emily's case was being turned over to the homicide unit. Of course, everyone felt the sadness with that announcement, but sometimes certain departments can utilize different resources. There has been no clear-cut evidence, as far as we know, that Emily is alive or deceased. The next month, April of 2022, Jeff would be arrested on some theft and some other criminal charges in which he would go to jail for. The search for Emily has been tough, and the family has worked tirelessly on social media to promote awareness for Emily's case. They have also put up posters all over the different areas of Ontario, all the way down to Niagara Falls. They have also started a Facebook group, Missing Emily Bailey, Hamilton, Ontario. 
Join that group and show your support if you can. The family also posts a lot of video and photos of Emily and really gives a good idea of who she is. Hamilton, Ontario. Hamilton, Ontario wraps around the western end of Lake Ontario in Ontario, Canada. It's a pretty big Canadian city with a population of around 570,000 residents, not including the little suburbs around Hamilton. It is known as an industrial city as it produces 60% of all of the steel manufactured in Canada, but it's much more than industry. There's a big cultural aspect to the city with museums and parks and an educational aspect with a few different major colleges and universities in Hamilton. Hamilton is located about an hour southwest of Toronto. And if you continue around Lake Ontario for about another hour, you will be in Niagara Falls, Canada. Crime in this area is pretty average, according to Canadian statistics, although it does have a higher crime rate when it comes to hate crimes. The area where Emily was last known to be specifically was a home on Weir Street North near the intersection of Barton Street East. So let's zoom in on the map. Weir Street North and Barton Street is about three miles or five kilometers to Lake Ontario. Pretty close. It also borders the industrial section of the city, which is an area that is also right up on the lake. Weir Street itself looks primarily residential, which makes sense since we know that she was leaving someone's house. Authorities did state that she left the house between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. on January 1st. But some official reports have her date last seen as January 2nd. I'm not sure why the confusion or the discrepancy, but regardless, they did give a press conference where they said she left between 8 and 11 a.m. This is broad daylight, and it seems odd that no one saw her, or is it that no one will speak up on who they saw her leave the house with or where she was headed? Then the tricky part from here is what direction did she go in? Did she leave the city of Hamilton altogether? You are close to the U.S. border there, but certainly there'd be a record of her traveling into the States. Local searches of Hamilton and surrounding areas haven't really been conducted because no one is quite sure where to even look. Authorities did search a house on Weir Street, but it's unknown if that was the house Emily was said to be leaving from that morning, or if it's maybe Jeff's house, or if maybe those are one in the same. There was also nothing more said as to what may have been found during that search or what they were even looking for if they were looking for anything specific. What do you think happened to Emily Bailey? She had a tough history, no doubt. And is it possible that maybe she completely left the area to start fresh? She may also have been in a vulnerable state. Could that have opened her up to become a victim of trafficking? Or could she have met with foul play? Her family has expressed concerns that because of Emily's history with drugs, that her case would not be taken seriously by the public. Regardless of her history, Emily is still a missing person and needs to be brought home. I'll never understand how some people can disregard human beings because of some of their mistakes or their life choices. Everyone says that there is no way Emily would be gone for this long without talking to her family and her kids. Of course, they are worried. But Emily's mom believes that she is still alive and still out there. Or at least she said she wants to believe that. So that is what she focuses on. Even with all of Emily's troubles, she was always well-connected and in touch with her mom, her brother, her friends, and more than anything, loved her children and her visits with them. Her mom had this to say on the Facebook group for Emily. It's been seven months today since you were last seen. 
Those people know what happened. Someone needs to come forward. We all can't keep going on like this. I have never in my lifetime suffered anxiety or depression like this. I get out of bed and all I do is think of you. Where you are, what did they do to you? It's so hard. I hate going places. I can't go anywhere alone. I cry on buses, in stores, watching TV. I don't actually watch it. It's just on. Almost everywhere I go, things remind me of you. The new Dollarama opened and I wanted to call you and tell you about it, but I can't. I went to a festival of friends and wished so badly you were there. Someone, grow a heart. Give us closure, please. Missing far too long. I want people to know that these past eight months have been a nightmare for my youngest daughter. Not only went missing on January 2nd, but has left a profound amount of sadness in my heart and an emptiness that will forever remain that way. Her two babies are missing her so much. They don't fully understand what's going on, but they are smart. I think they understand more than we know. Emily's family and friends are longing for answers and we know someone knows something. Every day I get up, I take Harper places and I pretend to enjoy life, but it's hard because at some point Harper cries for mommy. It's so hard. I hate being around people for I cry when someone recognizes me or tells me that they are sorry for what we are going through. I write in a book every day since her almost two months missing, almost done with my second book. It does not get easier. In fact, the longer she's gone, the heavier my heart feels. So now it's been eight months. All I ask is that the cowards that know something, the secrets that you are holding on to, just make that anonymous call so the police can bring Emily home. Emily Bailey is described as a Caucasian female, five foot, seven inches tall and weighing around 100 to 125 pounds when she was last seen in January of 2022. She has shoulder length, black brown hair with dyed blue and green highlights. Emily loved to dye her hair different colors. Visual tattoos include an, an elephant on her left forearm, a Batman symbol on the outside of her right forearm, some symbols on her upper arm. Emily was 23 years old when she vanished and would today be 24. Emily has a loving family that needs answers and two young daughters waiting for their mom to come home. Hamilton police are asking anyone with any information about Emily or her whereabouts to contact the Hamilton Police Service Division at 905-546-2963. To provide information anonymously, call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-8477 or submit your anonymous tip online at www.crimestoppershamilton.com. I'm curious to know your thoughts on Emily's story. A shout out to the Canadian podcast, The Nighttime, who covered Emily's story in a three-part series back in June. If you are interested in diving into her case further, definitely check them out. Thank you so, so much for listening to Emily's story today. I welcome all case feedback and suggestions. You can send us a message anytime over on social media or via email at canwefindthem at gmail.com. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, as well as our subscribers. This is what helps keep the show going and what is enabling us to partner with the charity partners that we do. Thank you all again for your support of our show and for listening to these important stories. We will be back again soon with another Unsolved Missing Person episode. And until then, stay safe and Hug your loved ones.